Hello everyone, and welcome to the RPG Builder Editor presentation. RPG Builder is a Unity game engine framework allowing you to quickly create your dream game without ever touching a single line of code. As you can see, the editor is just like any other Unity window. It is directly inside the game engine. We can dock it, undock it, scale it, scale it down as you wish. But for now, we will go back to full screen. It has hundreds of systems and thousands of features available for you directly inside this clean and really easy to use editor. As you can see, everything is kept organized and very easy to tweak. Here, if we wanted to, for example, tweak some of the action of the, or some of the data from this fireball, we can go under ability type and change how many projectiles is going to fire, the speed of them, or if we wanted to change the cooldown, we go to the cooldown section, same for effect and so on. I'm not going to go in detail about each of those modules because they already have their own video on the channel. Each module already has not only their own video, but also their own documentation page. So if I now under the ability module and click on documentation, as you can see, it's taking us directly to the ability documentation page. If I now go to NPC, for example, and click on documentation, it is taking us to the NPC page. So this is very amazing for you to learn as you use RPG Builder. And if you really need help or something, not only you can go to the documentation page, but each documentation page also um, as a reference here, as you can see, to the YouTube video for the module. So all the information is available for you very easily. Now, going back to the editor, as I said, we have different categories and modules. Top left, it is showing the currently selected category and just aside of that, the currently selected module. If we click on combat now, it will let us switch from one category to another. Let's say that we now wanted to go to general. We will now be able to access all the general categories. So items, skills, and so on. As you can see, there are quite a few. And here, as always, we have the list of entries. So here we can see all the items we have in the um, database. And on the right, we have the um, view. The view, I'm going to go back to um, NPC, for example. The view is what lets you not only see the current data, for example, for the deer, but also tweak it, of course. So here we could change some settings. For example, if we wanted the deer to have a maximum level of five now, it would be possible. And that's where the action buttons comes in action. Because if we wanted this change to be now effective in our database, we simply click save and that's it. The deer data is now saved. Other action buttons that are very useful, of course, are the new button, which is letting us create a new NPC, for example. Duplicate, so we could click, we quickly create a new um, NPC with the exact same data of the deer, for example, and then we could, for example, tweak the level if we wanted to make it stronger or add some new loot tables or stats and things like that. Of course, the delete one, and as I said, the documentation, of course, as well as filters. Filters are really advanced. For example, let's go to the ability section and say that we wanted to only show abilities with an ID equal or below 15. There you go. As you can see here, the entry list is now updated directly uh, with a filter. Now let's add another filter and let's say that we should only show abilities which have a P in their name. Or we could do the opposite, which do not contain a P in their name. Or we could even say equal. So for example, um, bash. This is a really good and easy way for you to filter your um, entry list, but the um, filters are not only stopped to that. As you can see, I can minimize and maximize all those categories. And for each module, you have access to many, many different filters, which are pretty much, you know, all the data they can hold. So in the case of abilities, if I open ranks, as you can see, we have all this data here, ability type, cooldown settings, and so on. And we can access everything here as a filter. So for example, I could uh, decide to filter ability with a cooldown of zero or of one or 0 0.5, things like that. I'm pretty sure you can imagine how useful this is. And of course you can have as many filters as you want, remove them individually, remove the last one or remove them all at once. And of course you can then collapse back the filter window as which this of course works for every single module. So for example, if we go to item filter, we can add as many filters and we can now, um, for example, only show items with a specific stat or ID or name or weapon, mod, uh, weapon type or things like that. Anyway, going back to abilities or rather NPCs. 
So this was it for the action button, right? And um, we saw also that the view is really easy to work with, really clean. You can collapse all those things. Now, uh, let's see how you can actually use all that and in game. So what I mean by that is if I now go in game, I'm going to press play, continue and play your character here. You see that we have this uh, human sorcerer with a fireball. So right now the fireball is just, you know, a simple projectile. So it's going to, um, it, this one does not require a target. It is kind of like a free projectile that you can aim. And as you can see, it's only one projectile, right? And it's going to deal um, fire damage as well as a dot after it. Now, if I will go ahead, go to abilities, look for the fireball and edit the rank one, for example, I could decide to uh, fire 12 projectiles in a 60 angle spread, hit save, go back to game, use the fireball again, and that's it. We didn't do anything. We didn't restart play mode. We are tweaking the ability and testing it right away. And I think we cannot agree how amazing this is. Now, let's say that we still don't like it and we want 25 projectile on a uh, 360 angle spread and maybe 90 speed. Let's save, use fireball again, and that's it. Our ability is now, you know, um, in place and exactly how we want it. But let's say that this was a bit too extreme. We go back to normal. And that's it. We can save and hope our ability is like that. This, of course, I only showed you how to tweak one setting, but we can change many things. Let's say that we wanted the cooldown to be longer now. We can use the ability and now it's four seconds. Even better, we can tweak all the effects applied or even conditional effects. Anyway, uh, this is not a video about each of those modules. It will take forever otherwise. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how quick and amazing it is to um, tweak things in the editor, saving and not even having to restart the game. Now, going back to the editor, we have a few other pages. So after combat, uh, general and ward. So ward have, for example, task, quest, world position, resource node, game scenes, and dialogue. But we also have a setting page. And this is letting you um, define some global settings for your game. So for example, how often you're going to be saving, uh, the delay, you know, or if you even want to auto save, if it should auto save and quit. Uh, for the loading screen, because of course there is a loading screen system. If you want to need to click or maybe uh, load it automatically. Um, and also other things, for example, dialogue related. Let's go to the uh, combat one now. Here, which stat is actually used for health? Um, the critical bonus. Anyway, I'm going to skip the details, but as you can see, you can configure all these things directly in the editor, as I said, without ever really opening a script. So here you can define your own item types, on item quality, you can remove all of this if you wanted to and make your own. It's totally possible. Uh, weapon types, weapon slot, and so on. We also have the editor settings, but there is not much yet here, but a lot more is coming with 1.1. We have a light and dark theme. So depending on the Unity theme you're using, you can switch. And this later will be um, a lot of utilities. So in there, there will be a lot of uh, different buttons allowing you to, for example, delete everything in the database or maybe delete only the abilities and things like that. We also have the partner page, which is uh, every, where I show pretty much every single one of my amazing partners. So here we have Polytop, Gabriel, and you know, all of them. And as we click on them, not only you can see all the assets they provided, but you can also click and go to their asset store page directly. So if you want to check out their full packs, it's the way to do it. And um, I definitely encourage you to do so because they all have amazing assets in their own way. For example, Polytop has many, many different low poly assets. Uh, Kafofo have some great sounds. Gabriel Aguirre has many particles and so on. Now, um, the last page I wanted to show you actually is a Blink page. So nothing really special, but it's just where you can find more information about Blink the product. So if you do this, of course, it's going to link you to RPG Builder, but you most likely already own it. And you can also, of course, join the Discord and go directly to the YouTube uh, by clicking those buttons. So that's pretty much it. As you can see, the editor is just looking amazing. It's very clean, very easy to use. Uh, everything is really, really organized. And the control and features you have access to with it is just amazing. And this, I repeat it a lot, but it's really, really going to cut down your development time by a lot. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you for this video. I hope it was helpful. 
if you already use the RPG Builder, you're already familiar with this, but this is a new layout coming with 1.1, so it's still useful for you. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.